It's time now for a look at latest in local news. And the news will begin with another drug bust. As Sheriff Chuck Moser of the Wayne County Sheriff's Department and Chief Perry Morgan of the Jessup PD announced that on June 6th, the Jessup Wayne County Tactical Narcotics Team, assisted by Wayne County Sheriff's Office Patrol Division, executed a search warrant at 743 Sierra Lane, located in Jessup Wayne County. This was a result of a week long investigation involving a subject identified as Daryl Kicklider selling narcotics in Wayne County. Prior to execution of the search warrant, a traffic stop was initiated by the Wayne County Sheriff's Office Patrol deputies to result in the seizure of a quantity of methamphetamine and marijuana. Investigators and patrol deputies then executed a search warrant on the residence where a quantity of methamphetamine, a drug known as Molly, and marijuana were recovered. Investigators recovered the following items, almost a half ounce of methamphetamine, half gram of Molly, and 2.2 grams of marijuana. 63-year-old Daryl Kickletter of Jessup, 50-year-old Othea Smith of Jessup, 39-year-old Maria Linda Flanagan of Jessup, Lisa Harrelson, age 57 of Jessup, and 21-year-old Hannah Cortez of Jessup, all arrested, faced multiple charges, including but not, but not limited to sale of methamphetamine, two counts, possession of a Scheduled one drug, Molly, possession of Scheduled two drug with intent to distribute methamphetamine, possession of drug-related objects. The sheriff and police chief state the investigation is ongoing, may result in further arrest and charges. If anyone knows any information pertaining to this case or any other illegal drug activity or criminal activity, they're asked to contact the sheriff's office at 912-427-5970 or the Jessup PD at 912-427-1300. We have more from the City of Jessup Commission meeting, which lasted over two hours. As commissioners and the city mayor were hoping to have the first reading of their proposed budget passed, but Tuesday night they were not able to reach a consensus. Now they're looking to schedule another work session on the budget. Commissioner Tim Cockfield closed the discussion about the budget Tuesday, clarifying where he stood concerning the proposed additional $1 for the Jessup Police Department and firefighters. My fault, and I won't speak for Mr. Harvey, my fault and the late Commissioner House's fault, because I can speak for him, I believe, we were very close to friends and talked about it at length, was we wanted to give the dollar. The reason, I mean, the $2 that he asked for, the reason we didn't give the two dollars, and, and, and it's not that they deserve it anymore or they need it any more than the other departments. It's not about that at all. Everybody needs it. I'd like to give it to everybody. The idea is that the police and fire salaries are not competitive. So when the chief asked for the two dollars, the reason we gave him the dollar was it was half the cost of what the two dollars would be. Now I really think in hindsight that dollar probably needs to be changed to a percentage because I'm afraid we're unfairly benefiting the new employees over long-time employees. I mean, the chief just lost an employee, I think, mostly overpaid that has been here for a long time. A very valued member of our department. We hated to see him go, but he got a better opportunity and you can't blame him. But the reason we didn't give the two, we gave the one, was because it cost half as much and we were trying to get some sort of a compromise on that. So there seems to be some misunderstanding about that. Then when we voted to give the dollar to everybody, the comment was made we had all these millions and millions of dollars laying around in the bank. And I like to get a copy of exactly what bank accounts we have at any given date and how much is in those accounts. So the, 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 uh, the point was made that we have all these millions of dollars in the bank. And that's when I made the motion to then give the two dollars to police and fire. Commissioner House seconded the motion. You can look at the minutes of the meeting on the 25th, and they very accurately reflect that. I'd encourage anybody who has a question to get a copy of those minutes and look at them. So then I made the motion. Commissioner House seconded the motion to give the two dollars to the police, as the chief had requested. That was also a tie, and the mayor voted no which is fine, but it failed, four to three. But there seems to be a question as to who's going to give the police and fire the raises and how much those raises are, they want them to be. Um, hopefully we can clarify that at our next work session next week, or whenever later this week. Um, I thought my brain was not working too good. I'm still kind of in shock over Commissioner House's death. But, um, the, the idea was we gave the dollar because it was half of what the two dollars would be. It didn't have anything to do with valuing one employee over the other. We were trying to get the pay rate disparities fixed. Then when we had found out we had all these millions of dollars laying around, 
Commissioner Harvey and myself and Commissioner House made the, the, put it out there to go ahead and then give the fire and police the two dollar rate, and that failed. But I've been told by some family members of some of the police officers, and I don't know if this is going on in all departments, I'd like Ms. Marcus to find out. But I was told by a family member of one of the young police officers, and they don't, I'm not going to call their name because I don't want to get them in trouble. But th there's been meetings, like shift meetings. I don't know who all in the department had meetings, but it was like a meeting of the shift where it came down from above, and I don't know if that's from the command staff, I don't know where it's coming from, trying to ascribe motives to different members of this board, trying to make certain members look better than other members in the eyes of the police department. Now, if that's happening on duty and in some sort of an official way, um, I mean, I don't, is that a violation of the ethics ordinance, Mr. Connor? Or, I mean, because it says harassment falls within the nature of not just of sexual harassment, but also of political affiliations or organizations. I mean, I think an argument could be made that's a violation of the ethics ordinance. Yeah. So employees generally under the uh, National Labor Relations Act have the right to discuss the terms and conditions of their employment. So. But we don't need city employees criticizing certain members of this board and, and praising other members of this board. Let the officers decide for themselves who voted how. Then they can decide who supports the police. Once again, those comments to Commissioner Tim Caulfield. Once again, the first reading of the city budget did not pass Tuesday. And to recap how the city got to this point, it goes back to the earlier work sessions, and specifically the work session on May 25th, which took place at City Hall beginning around 11 a.m. and saw Mayor Ralph Hickox have to cast two deciding votes as the city had two 3-3 three, three votes on that day. Heading into that work session, Commissioner Tim Caulfield felt that the city had already agreed upon the budget and was against the work session altogether, asking why did the city need an additional work session when they had already agreed on the budget. Again, they had their retreat on Jekyll Island and Tim Cockfield felt that the budget was already decided. It would include the one additional dollar for an hour for both Jessup police and firefighters in order to attempt to help retain officers and firefighters, which the city says they're losing to other departments around us who pay simply more money. Police Chief Perry Morgan had requested an additional $2, but the city agreed on $1 at the retreat heading into the May 25th work session. At that work session, Commissioner Stanley Todd stated that he felt the city should give all city employees in all departments the additional $1. He felt that was it was only fair. He said he didn't want to show favoritism to one department over the other. A vote on that motion by Stanley Todd to give all departments the additional dollar ended in a 3-3 tie, and Mayor Ralph Hickox voted just to give all employees the additional $1. Next, Commissioner Tim Cockfield motioned to give the officers an additional $2 over the $1, and that came down to a 3-3 tie vote again. And Mayor Ralph Hickox, before voting, stated he was not against law enforcement, but could not justify the additional $2 and voted no. And the motion by Commissioner Tim Cockfield failed 4-3. At the work session, Commissioner Tim Cockfield said if the city has so much money, let's give everyone a raise, and stated that he was in favor of eliminating city taxes altogether for taxpayers, saying they deserve a raise as well. He asked that that be put on the agenda, which it was for this past Tuesday. But after the long discussion about the budget, he asked that at the, the time, that be taken off the agenda. So that's how we got to this point. Now the city's entire budget's under scrutiny after the Tuesday meeting. Talk about the million dollar pool project, how much it'll cost up keep each year, talk about the proposed fire station, and on and on it went Tuesday. And the next up, the next step is to have another work session. But again, that work session has not been scheduled at this time. As soon as we learn when that is scheduled, we'll pass that information along. Again, we stated before, we'll state it again, Mayor Ralph Hickox has only served office seven months and has voted eight times to break ties on the city council. Before that, the two previous mayors served a total of 35 years and voted only one time to break a tie. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Chesapeake City Commissioner is looking to appoint their next commissioner representing District 5, but they need the residents' help. Commission Tuesday night at the council meeting learned that they can appoint someone to fill the term of Ray Haas, and they have 45 days to do so. If they don't appoint someone into the 45-day period, City Attorney Michael Connor stated Tuesday that the governor will step in and make that appointment. 
that the 45 days expire. City asks that any resident in District 5 who's interested in, in being on the council to send a letter of interest to the city manager, Rose Marcus, and commissioners will look at those interested in making an appointment from those who write in. So if you're a resident in District 5, interested in serving on the city council, send your letter of interest to City Hall. You must be a resident of District 5. You must have lived in Wayne County for at least one year, and you must be a law-abiding citizen. Once again, the city taking those letters of interest for the next two weeks. Another key story from Tuesday's city council meeting is the board's approval of the South Macon Street Connector project on a 4-1 vote with Commissioner Tim Cockfield voting against. Thompson Hutton on hand showing the commissioners the project along with city engineer Bill Schumann. It's a T-SPLOS project, $3 million project that first was projected at $1.9 million, but due to the wetlands issue and other costs, the project now around $3 million. With the T-SPLOS funds and the city's portion in the budget, they're still $1.2 million short. The purpose of the project is to alleviate the problem of big trucks traveling on Sunset Boulevard. This project, they state, will solve that issue as part of the IDA's project at the industrial park. Commissioner Tim Cockfield wanted more time to study the project, asked that it be tabled. Commissioner Pam Schumann made a motion to approve the go-ahead on the project, seconded by Shirley and Armstrong and voted on 4-1, although Commissioner Harvey Berry hesitant on his vote. Said at first he wasn't sure how to vote, but after a long pause, eventually voted yes. Also voting yes was Commissioners Pam Schumann, Shirley Armstrong, and Stanley Todd. Once again, the South Macon Street project approved Tuesday on a 4-1 vote. We'll be back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes in the news. Again, a reminder, the Summer Food Service Program kicked in yesterday, Wednesday, June 7th. It runs every Wednesday up until July 26th. Great turnout yesterday. Sites are Wayne County High School, James E. Bacon Elementary, the Sam Dreyer Center in Scriven, and the Odom Rex Center. Free breakfasts and lunches and bags for multiple days provided for children for ages up to 18 and for people with special needs. And this will take place all summer long every Wednesday. Again, the meals can be picked up on a drive through basis. There's no on-site eating. The time's Wednesday, 1030 to 11 a.m. And Odom, the time, 11 to 1130. And that's taking place every Wednesday this summer, the Summer Food Service Program. Finally, the news, the Chamber is selling tickets to their annual Legacy Dinner, which is scheduled for Thursday, June 29th at 7 p.m. at the Pine Forest Country Club. Chamber, our guest today on the Butch and Bob Show, to talk about the big event. At the event, they'll have the passing of the gavel as well as the announcement and presentation of several awards. Tickets $75 for members, $100 for non members. Everyone's invited. Once again, the date Thursday, June 29th. If you need more tickets or information, contact the Chamber, the number 912 427 2028. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan's having a great day. 